Everything on the front of this vehicle has been rebuilt and it looks absolutely awesome. Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the next video on the 85 Signal Red 300 CD. Today we're going to dive into the front suspension. I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling everything and loading it up with some new parts. So hope you enjoy the video. All right, first thing we're inspecting here, of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do the front uh, calipers because those are probably the original and with 88,000 miles, you know, those could last another 30,000 miles, 50,000 miles, 10,000 miles, I don't know. Um, I don't know when the seals are gonna start leaking here. So we'll go ahead and replace that. We wanna put in, of course, new brake hoses. Uh, the rotors, these rotors have a, a good lip on them, so they've been on there for a while. So let's start off by go ahead and removing all this stuff. We'll also check the wheel bearings and uh, I'll probably replace those also. And of course, we're gonna go through all this front suspension. We'll start by just getting our dust cap off of the bearing. Okay, that grease has been in there for a while. So we're gonna get these bearings out of here and of course, uh, repack the bearings. Might install a new bearing, new bearings and seals too. And I also want to look at the races. This is just a uh, five millimeter Allen to get the spindle nut off. Now let's take the brake pad wear sensor off and I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the sensors here. These uh, pads are new um, and so are these wear sensors. Uh, so we're actually going to keep the uh, brake pads but we're definitely changing the uh, rotor. And we'll take that, take that bolt out and just put it back in the caliper so we don't lose it. Actually, it can just hang right there in the sensor. Okay, next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and loosen uh, the nuts on the tie rods. And I'm going to do this stuff on both sides of the car, guys. I'm just recording this side of the car. There we go. We also need to get the uh, uh, center link. We need to undo this bolt here. Let me go ahead and get that one out of here. And then we're going to break all these loose with the uh, little tie rod or ball joint separator, which I'll show you guys. Okay, our pad wear sensor harness, that can just hang right there. And this is our little ball joint separator. And it simply just goes right around there like that. And I actually just use a little spacer right there. So I don't have to torque it down as much. It takes up some of the slack. And you know, set that guy in there. And now let's just get our uh, impact and hit it on there. There we go. Now what you can also see here, uh, the steering shock or the steering stabilizer is bolted to the frame. So we want to go ahead and remove that. We want to save that bolt. 
And we'll just put this bolt back to the frame because we're going to use this out with our replacement uh, stabilis, st steering stabilizer, which is, uh, that's what's on here now from Mercedes is a stabilis. That's who made their uh, stabilizers and engine shock dampers, dampeners. So we'll just tap that guy out of there. We'll pull that shock out. And then we're going to put that right back through there because we're going to reuse that. Okay, now that's removed, we want to check the condition of the idler arm. <clears throat> yeah, that is super tight. There's no play in that. That's excellent condition. No, no need to change the idler arm bushing. You can see our center link is now hanging down. And we just want to break the ball joint loose right over here. All right, guys, so that's what we've just removed, our tie rods, uh, center link, and I'll show you like why we're removing this. So it doesn't look horrible, but like for example, this is the uh, steering stabilizer shock. Look at that, there's no resistance at all. It's just worn out, it's the old original stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and replace it. Yeah, see, see how loose the, uh, how loose the ball joints are in the tie rods? Um, this is uh, the original stuff, so it's just time to change this stuff. All right, guys, what we have here is the mounting arm that the tie rod connects to. And to install our new ball joints, we have to remove this. So we're going to just take it off here. Okay, guys, at this point, you can see all of our steering linkage is removed. So what we can start doing now uh, is removing the uh, rotor, uh, take the brake caliper off, get the dust shield off, and then start working on removing our uh, shocks and uh, spindle, I'm, I'm sorry, steering knuckle. Now, we're replacing these hoses and calipers, so it's okay if I leave it, uh, if I leave the caliper hanging here, because we're replacing those hoses. So we'll take off our spindle nut, and we'll set our spindle nut aside. We'll clean all that up later. Here's our outer wheel bearing. Set that aside. And that just slides off. Now, right here I'm looking at the rear uh, seal. You know, it's not horrible condition, but we're gonna install uh, some new rotors. And so while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and put in some new seals and repack our hubs. I mean, that grease is not horrible, but uh, it's a little, crusty it's showing some age so that's probably some original grease in there so we'll go ahead and clean all this off and these spindles are in fantastic condition look at that very nice um, let's go ahead and get our dust shield off here so there's our dust shield now let me go knock this out on the other side and then we'll come back over here and we'll work on uh getting our spindle I'm sorry, our steering knuckle and our shock out. Okay, so here's where we're at. We have our uh, rotors, bearings, uh, dust shields, tie rod mounting arms, tie rod center link, steering shock, uh, all removed from the vehicle and along with our brakes. Now, what we're left with our steering knuckle here, and of course behind here is the ball joint. We can address that next. But what I also want to change on this car, because we're doing all of the front suspension, is the control rod bushing. This bushing mounts in here, and you actually screw it in from the back. Now that's the original one. Uh, a symptom of that, uh, of a failure of that part, is when you're like going over a speed bump or something, you'll hear a clunk sound. And that's usually a symptom of this. Um, so in order to do that though, we need to compress this spring and remove it from the vehicle, and then we can disassemble. Uh, we're gonna do the lower control arm. And guys, since I'm going to this extent, we're gonna just go all the way, and we're also gonna replace the lower control arm bushings. So when I'm done, everything on the front of this car will be brand new rubber. Um, so we have to get this out now getting this out uh, that's dangerous you want to have the special uh, tool let me show you what that is okay guys if you're a hobbyist you can get these for uh, cheap on ebay but 
Uh, if you're doing this on a regular basis, like myself, like a shop, uh, you don't want to use that eBay tool. Uh, this is made by, I guess that's Jadori or Jador. It used to be Klein, but this was the original manufacturer for Mercedes that made this tool. Now, I think like wholesale cost, this is like $800, but it is a spring compressor tool. And these go into the springs, this slips down from the top, and then you tighten this and it squeezes it together. Like I said, if you have to do this like once on your car or, or twice, you can get them for like 150 bucks on eBay, but uh, those are dangerous. They can fail with extended use. So you want to use uh, the correct uh, tool or have a shop do this for you. Um, if you're going to be, if you do this a lot, you, you definitely want to buy this tool. Now, before I install this on the car and show you how to use it, uh, first thing we're going to do is get these front shocks out of here. Because uh, holding the spring in right now, you still have your ball joint and your upper control arm. So it's safe to go ahead and remove this shock. So first thing you need to do to remove this shock is get this nut off of the top. Oh, good. There we go. Sometimes that will spin the shock and you have to hold the, uh, hold the top of the shock with a wrench. All right, we got that off. Okay, now we gotta compress the shock <clears throat> and pull it forward. Now, before we do that, let's go ahead and loosen uh, this front bolt here, and then when we pull it forward, we can get to the back one. Okay, guys, we have a 12-point socket. That's a 12-point bolt there, and a little extension, and we can get it right on there. There we go. And our shocks, our replacement shocks, will come with uh, new hardware. Sometimes this can be a little difficult, um, but these shocks are not very stiff. Now the shock, yeah, see how that's not very stiff. Uh, the shocks I'm going to reinstall in here are the Bilstein HD shock because that is closer to what the factory uh, would have installed. It gives a little bit firmer ride and it feels, it feels better and you get better handling. This is a very soft shock and uh, you'll get too much body roll with a shock like that. So we'll just pull that forward. Let's turn our spindle out of the way. And there we go. All right, there we go. We have our shock out. And here you go. Let me show you why I'm replacing the shock. This is just on the passenger side. Look at that. That's a joke. Um, somebody replaced these with some crappy mar aftermarket shock. So that's why we're putting... A Bilstein is going to last you, you know... 100, 150,000 miles. Uh, this, that's a joke. All right, guys, now is, when we want, now is when we want to start with our spring compressor. Let me show you how this works. So we have two pucks that are going to go into our shocks. We have a bottom puck, uh, I mean our springs, a bottom puck and a top puck. Now this bottom puck, if you flip it over, see there's little, little cutouts in here. And what happens, here, let me set this down. What happens is this tool goes through here like this, and then you see those cutouts, you rotate it, and those, those uh, teeth fit into those cutouts, and you can compress the spring. And then to get it out, you rotate it, and you can pull it back out. Okay, guys, there's a hole on top of the, uh, of the spring. You see the spring down in there. Now we need to insert our tool through that hole and through the plates that are in the spring. We're just going to go down between all these vacuum lines and power steering lines. There we go. Okay, guys, you can see we have our tool down through the center here. And down at the bottom, our little teeth are locked into the bottom plate. Now, here's the game you got to play when doing this. You need to have that tool compress enough to compress the spring to get it out. Actually, I went ahead and compressed it, and I think we're fine. So we can see uh, that this bottom coil right here has lifted out of the spring perch. So that means there is no pressure on that spring perch. 
Okay, wow. now for safety, we have our jack stand right here under our lower control arm. So if for some reason uh, this is still under tension or this fails or who knows, uh, we have our jack stand holding in the pressure of the spring. It's just a double safety. So jack stand plus spring compressor. Now I'm going to undo the upper uh, control arm. I'm going to pop this ball joint loose and then we will slowly raise the vehicle and we'll stand back and watch the spring. And uh, if we've done this correctly, there'll be no tension on it. The control arm we can push down and then we can pull the spring out. Okay, guys, that upper control arm is already uh, loose. The, uh, the tapered fitting uh, just came out with, I guess, the pressure, what little pressure the spring had. So we're going to go ahead and raise this, and we're going to watch and see what that spring does. There we go, guys. You see how that spring uh, is not under pressure there? There we go. Now, let's go ahead and take this spring out of here and safely lay it down in the back of the shop so we can rebuild this side of the suspension. This is the not fun part right here because you have to be uh, a little vulnerable and get this spring out. There we go. All right, there we go, guys. Let me go lay this down. Okay, guys, we're just going to lay our spring right there in the back of the shop. And uh, I've been unfortunate to have I've done enough of these cars where I've had that pop loose before. Uh, so that's a little scary, but it only happened once and it was a, with a cheap compressor. And that's what uh, gave me the cue to buy the very expensive $800 tool. And I haven't had a problem since, knock on wood. All right, guys, here's what we have gained by taking the spring out. We can now remove the spring perch. We'll clean that up in the parts washer. We can now remove the uh, ball joint and knuckle. We can now remove the control rod bushing back here. And we can now remove the lower control arm. And that whole assembly, all these pieces can come out. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's go ahead and break this ball joint loose from the control arm while it's in the car. Okay, guys, you have seen this in many of my videos. This tool works great. It's OT OTC small pitman arm puller, and it's part number 8149. And it looks like this. Now, this goes around your lower control arm, and that pushes onto the ball joint stud. Here. We're going to put our tool on here. And when you have the right tool, it requires the least amount of effort. And compress the tool. There we go. As easy as that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is remove our spring perch. It's three 13 millimeters. We're going to clean all this up in the parts washer and refinish it in the factory original semi-gloss black, and this is gonna look beautiful. Now, when I take those out, I like to put the uh, bolts right back in there. That way I don't run the risk of losing them. Yeah, so here we have a 19 millimeter, and there's actually a 19 millimeter nut on the bottom that we will just hold uh, with our wrench here. There we go. Guys, there's a better view of the nut we just took off from under the lower control arm. And we're gonna tap that out, uh, tap that bolt out from the bottom. Okay, guys, I got out the uh, earthquake. That's a really big, like 1,700 foot pound impact. And I put that up there and squirted some PB blaster around it. And our bolt finally came out. Okay, let's go ahead and get our bushing out of there. Just take a look at it. So these bushings are perfect condition. It's almost like there's no wear on there at all. Show you guys. See, that is just a piece of rubber around. It's like a steel insert that's in there. 
and the part that we just knocked out this is still hot there we go let me take this apart there we go Ooh, it's still hot from when i was getting it out of there see this is just a steel puck and that steel puck sits down in that bushing right like that and that bushing is uh new condition so well i'm sorry it's not new condition but there's there's no reason to replace this bushing okay guys so what we've achieved there is we now have the control rod bushing and the control rod arm is no longer mounted to the lower control arm see that rod is now loose so we can take off the lower control arm, slip it off that rod, and we can also take out the control rod bushing. There we go. See that control arm is now loose. Guys, this is also where you set your uh, camber and caster. This, is, uh, this bolt has an eccentric on it that allows you to do your front end alignment. See? Move it in. See how that's moving forward and backward as I turn that? There we go. Look at that. That bolt looks like it's, it's brand new from the factory. All right. So there we go. See, that's an eccentric and you have a notch right on the end of it on the bolt and it goes through there. So there you go. Now, when you rotate this, that eccentric causes it to move forward or backward due to the way it's mounted up here. Uh, and that's how you adjust your alignment. So let's go ahead and put that back together. There we go. So there we go. There's our lower control arm bushings. And really, after 40 years or 36 years, we have a little bit of cracking right there. I'm just going to go ahead and do everything on this car. Okay, here we're going to remove the control rod bushing. go we can take that out of here and there we go guys there is our control rod bushing you can see under that boot see all that boot is busted in there it's rotted so you can see some of the boot right there that's an original one it's time to change it okay guys that completes uh, the disassembly of the driver's side of the car every bit of suspension has been removed from here Here's what we've done so far today. On the driver's side starting, we have the steering knuckle, the hub, the rotor, the dust shield, the spring perch, the lower control arm, the control rod bushing, the tie rod mounting bracket, left tie rod, center link, steering shock, right tie rod, mounting bracket, and shock, dust shield, hub, and rotor. Before I go to the other side of the car, we want to go ahead and start reassembly with new parts on this side of the car because I only have one spring compressor. So we have to go ahead and finish up over here, put back in our spring, reassemble these components, and then move to the other side. Let's go to the warehouse. Let's pick up all our new parts for this vehicle uh, and then go ahead and start installing the driver's side. Okay, I just got back from the uh, parts warehouse. Uh, the only thing I'm still waiting on are the rear calipers but uh, we have uh, let's see new seals for the back of the hubs and bearings um, and I'm inspecting the bearings uh, if they need to be changed I'm going to change those uh, highly unlikely it needs new bearings though we'll clean them up and just reinstall some seals and uh, re-grease them there's some grease uh, ball joints these are limb forder uh, these are the lower control arm uh, bushings Front brake hoses, there's already new brake hoses on the rear, so I'll use those. Uh, here's our uh, steering shock. Now remember how loose the other one was? See, look at that. It doesn't even do anything. That's why we're changing it. Uh, this is a stabless. Let me show you. See how stiff that is? That's how they're supposed to be. And this is the OEM manufacturer. I uh, got our limb forder uh, center link, limb forder tie rods. Uh, those are the control rod bushings, uh, new front rotors, new rear rotors, 
brand new Bilstein shocks front and rear. And there's our ATE calipers. Like I said, I'm still waiting on the rear calipers to come in. So let's go ahead and uh, knock out our ball joint on the driver's side and get our new ball joint pushed in. All right, we're gonna go ahead and knock out this old ball joint. Um, and the way you do that, you just use this uh, steel slug and you gotta get back here. Now I don't put my hand on it and hold it because if it presses through, it can take your hand with it and it will really hurt you. Uh, so I just step back and pick it up every time. I just let it fall off onto the ground. There we go, it's almost out. There we go. That ball joint came out and there we go. That's why, uh, that's why we're replacing it right there. That's a crusty old ball joint. Now, let me show you how to uh, get the bushing out of the lower control arm. These bushings probably still had some good life left in them, but see, we're starting to get some dry rot around here. Now, the actual part of the bushing that does most of the work is actually inside here. So you'll see when we press these out. So let's go ahead. First thing we got to do, I need to get a chisel and chisel in the ends of this little, uh, this is an aluminum insert or a steel insert. Yeah, I think that's aluminum. We want to chisel in the ends and then we can knock out the insert. And then that allows us to, uh, we'll take a little air hammer and knock out the bushings. I'm gonna get a chisel right here on the edge. And we're gonna start to chisel in that flange. See how that flange is now bent in a little bit? See how that flange has started to bend in? We'll do it from the other side. And we'll start to chisel it through. And there we go. There we go. See how it's come out? A little bit more. There we go. So here is the steel insert. Now the replacement will be flat on one side. See how there's a beveled edge here? So we'll push it through, and then we'll, we, we will re-bevel the edge. And I'll show you how to do that when we put in the new ones. All right, the way we're gonna get these bushings out here, we're gonna use the uh, Ingersoll Rand air hammer. And let's see here. We'll try that one right here. See what progress we can make with that. Almost. Almost. There we go, guys. There is our bushing. And yeah, we could go ahead and that could use a replacement. Let's get this other side out. All right, let's compare. Here's our replacement bushing. See how we have a nice flat edge here and a flat edge here. And you can see this one, it looks like those flat sides have slightly worn off and it's had years of pressure on there. We got a flat side there. and So yeah, I see a little slightly deformed. So, then the insert is right here. That's that insert we just banged out. So I'll show you how, how that all goes back together. But let's uh, throw these in the trash. Oh, also you can see there's our little marks. See our tabs that I was pointing out earlier? That shows you the orientation of the bushing. Now these might have been twisted a little bit because that tab uh, should be like vertical or up and down in the uh, control arm. And these had actually twisted a little bit, so they were like they were back like that ever so slightly. So we'll put these in uh, untwisted where that tab is facing uh, vertically. Here you go. You can see on the passenger side of the vehicle, which I haven't removed yet. See those tabs, those bushings have not twisted at all. And so our little tabs are 
perfectly vertical like uh, on the bottom and up uh, vertical, directly vertical on the top with the center line across there. So that's how we're uh, reinstalling these. And what that does, there you go. See it aligns the flat spots with the top and bottom. Okay, here we have our ball joint and our tool uh, to reinsert the ball joint. Now, before I put it back in there, I just take some uh, Scotch-Brite and we're just gonna clean around in there just a little bit. Nothing, nothing drastic. You can see down in there, see it's nice and shiny and you can see the little grooves where the other ball joint was in there. So, the way this tool works, um, you guys have seen this in lots of videos, but I put a little stand right here and that goes on here. And then we just set our ball joint right there. Now this is curved, right? And we need a vertical press on it. So the way this tool works, it has a cutout in the tool. So that allows you to put the tool over the ball joint and then that cutout goes around the control arm. See how that works? And then we can get a nice, perfectly vertical press into there. All right, now we're just gonna press that ball joint in there. Let me zoom in for you guys. Okay, you can see the ball joint there. You can see the little splines running around the bottom. And that's gonna press in here. So let me go over here. I'll, I'll pump the uh, hydraulic press and you guys can watch it. See it going down in there? Now this is a 20 ton hydraulic jack. So this takes a lot of force, guys. There's really no other way you can do this unless you have one of the uh, impact wrench operated uh, presses. This guy off of here. And there we go. That ball joint is perfectly pressed in there, perfectly flush all the way around the bottom. And that's how you correctly put in a ball joint. All right, we're just gonna clean up this spindle with a little acetone and I'm gonna re, uh, I'm sorry, the steering knuckle. And then I'm going to uh, re-spray it, uh, the factory semi-gloss, but the acetone just gets any, uh... actually guys, this one doesn't need to be re-sprayed. The factory paint is, uh, is still on there. Yeah, that's, uh, Oh yeah, I might do a little touch up down here. Um, anyway, I just like these to look really nice, so go ahead and clean that up really good. All right, just covered up our spindle. We'll get a nice coat of paint back on here. And that's it guys. So let's let that dry. Okay, you can see we raised up our hydraulic press because we're gonna put our lower control arm in there and press in the bushings. And first I just wanna take some Scotch-Brite and clean it up a little on the inside. Okay guys, we want to align our tab with the top of the control arm. So that's gonna be right about there. Let's see if we get enough room to push this guy in here. There we go. And that's going to align up right like that. And we can go ahead and push this guy in there. Let me just make sure we're aligned. Yep, that tab is running vertical. There we go. Perfect. There we go. There we go. And see how I aligned the tab straight with the center line. If this were like, if you're holding this vertical right through there, that's how you want the tab to be. Same with the bottom. See, here's the center line that runs through the bottom. That's where the tab is. All right, okay, guys, these don't require a lot of force. I've just got two plates and a little block of wood. If you're doing things that take a whole lot of force, you don't want to use a block of wood. But 
these don't take a lot of force to push in. I lined up my tab. We're just going to push this side in. Now, once it bottoms out, I go a little bit far. There we go. A little bit farther just to ensure it's all the way in there. And there's a shot from the other side. You can see you got a, the tab there and the tab there, and they're straight across. So let's go press in our centerpiece, and I'm going to show you a trick to how you do that. Okay, we have our vise here. Now here's the centerpiece. Here's how they come. One side is beveled. So we'll do it like that. So I'm going to push it through here. Now here's what you do. This is uh, a lug nut or a lug bolt, and it has the, the beveled edge. And that beveled edge is the same as that bevel right there. So we're going to go ahead and tap this one through a little bit more. The lug bolt right there. And just give it a good hit. All right, and there we go. We can see we beveled that edge. Let those dry. All right, guys, now what we're going to do is replace our control rod bushing. And if you read about this stuff online, the uh, online, you know, armchair mechanics are they always tell you to count the threads here and then put this back onto this one with the same amount of threads showing. Uh, however, my experience is when you install it back on the car and you have the control arm in there. You want to try to get this hole in the dead center of where it mounts on the control arm. That is going to get you more accurate than counting threads. All right. Get that protective sleeve off of there. And we'll put this back on here. We'll do it. Place. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, refinish this, repaint it, and then we'll get this stuff back in the car. Okay, one of the last things we need to disassemble is get this uh, old rotor off the hub. Uh, and then once we have that disconnected from the hub, we're going to pull out this rear seal, get the bearings out. We're going to clean up the hub really nice and uh, then put in a, a repacked bearings, seal, and new rotor. So... To get these off, guys, it's best to use one of these. I use an Earthquake XT. That is like 1,700 foot-pounds of torque. It's just a cheap harbor freight tool. All right, you want to make sure it's seated well before you pull the trigger. There we go. And there's our hub. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up and get this old seal out of here. All right, guys, to get the seal out of the back, you just want to put your hub in your vise. And you're going to want to use a seal puller. That's what this is. Use a uh, chisel and chisel in the sides of the seal and that'll loosen it up for us. Get this guy back in here. There we go. She's coming now. Almost. There we go. There we go, guys. We got our old seal out of there. There's our bearing, and that's uh, some nice old original grease. So we're going to clean this up in the parts washer and clean up the hub 
inspect these bearings. They appear to be in excellent condition. Clean everything up and then repack those bearings. If, if I don't like how they look, we're gonna go buy some new bearings. And I'm gonna take a look at this bearing here because I think these bearings are absolutely fine. That is a beautiful condition bearing. So we're just gonna repack these bearings and put them back in the car and put some new seals on our hubs. Let me set this bearing aside here. And we wanna get all this old grease out of this hub. See all that old grease there? All right, we've got everything cleaned up in the parts washer and uh, our bearings are fantastic condition. We just need to re-grease these things. Um, you can see our hubs are clean. We cleaned the spindle nuts, fantastic condition. There's the little uh, dust shield nuts and our radio interference pin. And we got all the old grease out of the uh, hubs. So what I wanna do now is refinish these hubs and put the factory semi-gloss black back on there. So I just put the paint cap over the hub so you don't get paint inside there. And then we'll just hit it a couple of times. Put our paint cap right there. And we will also just refinish the dust cover. You can see some of the black paint was still on there. Okay, got our bearings over here. And we've gotten all the old grease out of there. Here's some wheel bearing grease. And we just want to squirt that into our hand like that and we're going to repack the bearing. And you just want to tap it in there and squish the grease up into the bearing and it'll come out of the rollers. This is actually from Mercedes-Benz wheel bearing grease. I like how they color it neon green. Never seen neon green wheel bearing grease. All right guys, our uh, hub here is dry enough for me to just touch on the sides and uh and flip over there we go and we want to go ahead we're going to put a little grease around our race and the races are excellent condition no need to change the races and i'll put a little grease down in here where the spindle is going to ride There we go. Very nice. You got that coated up good there. Now we're going to drop in. This is our inner bearing. Can't put it in wrong, guys, or it won't turn. All right, very nice. Now, guys, we're going to knock in our seal. So this is our seal, and we're just gonna set that right there. All right, guys, this is a very scientific, complicated way to do this. You put a two by four or equivalent piece of wood on the back of it, and you knock your seal in. And there we go. Our seal is seated, and it's even. All the way around. Let me give it one more tap on this side. Perfect. Exactly how I like it. 
All right, let's go ahead and knock in our other one. All right, guys, we're done over here. Once we put it back on the car, um, we're going to stick our, there we go. There is our outer bearing. We'll just drop that guy down in there. And where's our lubrication? Get that nice and lubricated there. Okay, so those are ready to install back on the car. And when we do that, we also want to put a little bit of grease in the dust cap. Mercedes says to do that. So we'll squirt some there. And we'll squirt some right there. There we go. Don't go crazy. They just say put some down in the oh, bottom of the dust caps. All right. And then there's all our parts there. So we'll reassemble all this once we get our steering knuckle and uh, spindle back on the car. All right, guys, that's probably the best view I'm be able to get you. Uh, what we need to do now is put the lower control rod and the control rod, uh, I'm sorry, the lower control arm and the control rod and bushing back in the car. Now, you kind of have to do these together because of the way they fit in the vehicle. So let's put that. Let's, let's see if we can just get this up in here. All right, we got that up in here. Okay, we need to shorten that probably a little bit. Let's just get our holes lined up here. There we go, that's about perfect. Now we get a fresh bolt with the bushings, uh, nylock. I mean, I'm sorry, a fresh nut with the bushings. Uh, so we'll go ahead and install that. And we'll put our eccentric washer on here. Eccentric. And guys, you never want to tighten up suspension uh, until the car is on the ground under its full weight. So we're just going to snug things up for now to hold it in place. And I'm going to put the bolts around the other side to hold this in. And you definitely want to use Loctite. Mercedes uh, use Loctite. So we'll put some Loctite on here. Okay. See our threads right here? Remember we counted the threads? And the point of that was to get that hole to line up in the center of the control arm. And you can see we're off. So we're going to make an adjustment. We're going to turn right here until we get that to be dead in the center. And I always like to look from the bottom. And you can see we're kind of off from the center. So let's get that lined up. Now, guys, these are all rough adjustments. You're, you definitely have to go to the alignment shop after doing this job. There we go. That's about it. So counting the threads really doesn't do anything for you guys. Okay, let's get that tightened down. What we've accomplished, we have our new bushings. We have our front control rod bushing lined up with the hole in the control arm and the control rod. And we have our new control rod bushing. So let's go ahead and get a 19 millimeter, tighten that down. We already locked tight it and tighten those down. And this we need to leave, need to leave loose until we put weight on the suspension. 
All right, guys, the next thing we want to do is put on our spring perch. And these are just 13 millimeter. And we'll set our spring perch there. Holes line up, and you want to use a little Loctite on these two. All right, let's hit that with a little semi-gloss black, make it look nice like everything else. Very nice. Okay, guys, here's the part you've all been waiting for. Uh, we're going to get the spring and the steering knuckle back in here. All right, that's going to hold it there. Now... Let's go ahead and set our spring in here, and then we're going to lower the car down on a jack stand and it, and, uh, until it lines up with the upper control arm here. Something about... <clears throat> now, there's a way the spring is oriented. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there's a hole right here in the lower spring perch, and that's where the uh, end of the spring comes right up to that hole. So first we need to get it up in here. There we go. Okay. Now, get this turned around. All right, I think we can lower the car. It's in the groove. We're gonna see what that'll get us right there. Okay. Now, let's get our nut on the upper control arm. All right, I'm going to stand back over here, guys. Okay, there we go. Our spring popped right back into place. And there we go, guys. Our spring is safely back in the car, exactly how it should be. And now let's go ahead and torque down our upper and uh, upper control arm, lower ball joint. And I want to put our shock back in the car. Okay, guys, I just opened our nice new Bilstein shock. And guys, Bilstein supplies everything you need, including a brand new bump stop. So we'll put that in there. They also supply all the hardware. Okay, Bilstein also supplies all of your hardware. They already have the Loctite applied and they also include little lock washers. Okay, now we need to lower the car down, put a little weight on it by using a jack stand and attach the top components. There we go, now our shock is sticking through the top and we can get our new rubber bushing and nut on the top. Okay, what we have here, this is a Craftsman uh, eight piece open end ignition wrench set. This is like great for doing headers on old muscle, muscle cars, on Pontiacs especially. But they make these little right angle wrenches, you know, like this, and it's great for getting in there uh, let me find the one that holds this shock tower. There you go. And you can hold it still now while you tighten. See what I'm doing? And this little wrench holds it, fits perfectly on the end of that. Some guys use like uh, vice grips or whatever, but this little wrench kit is perfect for this. All right, guys, and you just want to tighten this down to your bushing starts to compress. You don't need to go crazy tight with this. So let's get a wrench on here. Let's see how far that is. All right, I like that there, you guys. We just started to squeeze the bushing. It's not overly tight. We have like five threads showing. That's not coming off of there, that's safe. But watch what happens to it when I raise it off of the uh, jack that it's on. It's, the suspension is going to hang down and really compress that bushing. All right, now all the suspension tension is pressing down 
and it's pulling uh, the shock down from that nut and it squishes our bushing around the edges. But that side is done. You remember how I told you not to tighten down that lower control arm bushing until the suspension is under a load? Well, we're going to put the suspension down on the jack stand and go snug that up. That way it's going to be safe to drive to the alignment shop. Okay, we just significantly compressed our su suspension. So now it's going to be all right uh, to tighten that up. Do more adjustments, but that is going to be tight enough to drive the one mile to the suspension shop. Okay, here we are behind the steering knuckle. There's the lower control arm. Remember, we had to remove this uh, mounting bracket for the tie rod for the steering linkage. So I've gone ahead and ap applied blue Loctite onto these, and now we need to get a torque wrench and make sure we torque these back down to spec. There we go. Okay, now it's time to reinstall the dust shield and uh, the hub and our new rotor. So first let's install the rotor on the hub. To install the new rotor onto the hub, you uh, turn the hub over. This is the back of the hub and this just slips over the top. And let me show you here. What you're gonna see are, there's two sets of holes. One set of hole is centered in the middle and the other hole is like out towards the outer edge. What bolts the rotor to the hub are the ones in the center. The other holes are for your lug bolts, which bolt the wheel on from the other side. Now it's important guys, you wanna put Loctite on your bolts. We'll get them all started by hand and then run them down. And I like to tighten them in a star pattern. And then after they're snugged up, I like to go back around. All right. All right, let's get this guy back on the car. Before we install that dust shield, just wanted to show you that beautiful new finished spindle. That's already a new upper control arm. Beautiful new shock, refinished lower control arm, new lower control arm bushings, control rod bushing, and brand new ball joint. Doesn't that look nice? Okay, let's go ahead and put back on our dust shield. It goes on like this. And guys, just like everything else, Mercedes uses some blue Loctite. That's it. You don't have to put crazy amounts of torque on those guys. Okay, now let us put on our hub and rotor. I've got the outer bearing here lined up. Ah, oh, beautiful. Now what we want to do is not wipe the grease off the bearing, but wipe the grease off our threads. Oops. There we go. Wipe the grease off our threads here so our spindle nut can easily thread on there. Now, what you want to do, guys, See, that's got a lot of play in it. So we want to tighten this down until there's no play. There we go. That is perfect. Oh, still a little bit of play. Still a little bit. Okay, there's no play there. 
So I'm going to back it off just a little. And there we go, guys. That's how you set the preload. Guys, you got to do it by feel. Somebody messaged me the other day and said, put a dial indicator on there and shake it. And you need to be like four thousandths or three thousandths, whatever. Guys, that's, you don't need to do that. You tighten it down when there's no play and then you back it off just a little. That's where you want your bearings. Now we're going to tighten that down with our five millimeter. And that's going to lock our spindle nut in place. Perfect. Freshly greased bearings, new ball joint, new rear seal, refinish the hub, new rotor, refinish the steering knuckle, new shock, new brake control rod bushing. Guys, that is all new stuff. All right, last but not least, let's put in our little copper radio interference pin into the end of the spindle. And then we've applied the grease, like Mercedes says, to the dust cap. We'll put the dust cap on there, and then we just need to tap that back on. All right, now let me just wipe this down, and then we can install our uh, new caliper on this side of the car. All right, guys, I temporarily have the old caliper uh, just back up on here, and that's so I can just break the line loose. All right, now that, that that line is loose, we're gonna pull this caliper off and I'm just gonna unscrew it and then cap the end uh, so we don't lose a lot of brake fluid. So let's go ahead and screw this guy off of here. Okay, put my thumb over it, set that caliper down and I'm just gonna put a little cap, I have it over the end, there we go. So now we're not going to lose a lot of fluid. And at our new hose here, we're going to go ahead and uh, undo this one, screw this one in, and then we'll screw our caliper onto this end. Okay, to get this guy loose up here, it is an 11 millimeter. And I'm just going to use my line wrench. There we go. And we got that one loose, so let's just unscrew this, and then we're quickly going to put in our other hose. Which I have. We'll see how fast we can do this. All right, that one is loose. Good. We'll get that line out of there. You can see our brake fluid starts dripping. And we'll push our new line in there. Here we go. We probably lost, I don't know, half a teaspoon. Let's get this down so it's gonna stop dripping for us. There we go. Okay, you can see we're not dripping. We got our cap on there and it's clean up there. We go ahead and hit that with some brake cleaner. There we go. All right, now let's get our caliper and we're gonna screw on our caliper. Now, the way I do it this way, the, the reason I do it this way, guys, is if you twist on your caliper while it's off the car, when you go to install it, it's not gonna kink your hose and put your hose in a strange shape. So we're gonna lose a little more brake fluid here. Here we go, let's take the cap off. And we'll just set that right down in there. And we'll get this guy started. And there we go. We probably lost a teaspoon of brake fluid by doing it that way. We'll just screw this guy on. There we go. See, now when we go to mount it, see how nice that brake hose is? It's not like 
twisted and kinked and wrapped around, it's in a nice smooth position. And that's the trick to doing that. So I'm gonna put one caliper bolt in here. Okay guys, I went ahead and picked up a box of uh, genuine Mercedes-Benz uh, pads. And then here's the uh, new hardware for the ATE caliper. Now ATE calipers uh, come with new caliper mounting bolts uh, with the Loctite already applied. So let's go ahead and get this caliper mounted. All right, we'll go ahead and run these down with the impact and then we'll get the torque wrench and finish them off. go and let's go ahead and slip in our brand new pads there we go now let's get the mounting hardware now ATE are a little different than Bendex uh, so this is the uh, pad retainer bracket and then you have these little pins that go through the caliper and you'll see right here it has like a soft metal that's probably lead but when you push this pin in, this little lead piece right there, you see the break, the gap in it? It compresses, and that's what holds it in there. So I'll show you. First, we'll go ahead, get that one started. Like that. And let's go ahead and just get this bottom one started. There we go. Like that. Now, let me show you how to tap those in there. Okay, you can see our little pins right here we just put in. They're not pressed all the way in. I just take a little punch. So you can push them right in there. And there we go. Those are held in there now. So, let's go ahead and get our brake pad wear sensor reattached and that's just a 10 millimeter now you don't need a lot of torque on here guys you just snug it up there we go that's not going anywhere okay for the brake pad wear sensors you see in the pads we have a a little hole right there and see there's another little hole right there the sensors plug in and then uh, they go into those little holes. Let me show you. So this sensor, we're just gonna plug it in right there. And this wear sensor, we're gonna plug in right there. There's a good. All right, now, see that little hole right there? We're just gonna put the sensor into that little hole and then it goes into a bracket on the pad that holds it in place. Same goes with this one. Move that one out of the way. There we go. So see we've got it in the little hole. And then we just push it down in there. And there you go. Your wear sensors are now plugged in. And there we go, guys. This concludes a complete rebuild of the driver's side of the vehicle. New shock. Refinish the steering knuckle. New lower control arm bushings. Refinish the lower control arm. I oh, see our brand new ball joint right back in there. Uh, refinish the hubs. Repack the bearings. Put a new seal on the back. Um, new rotor. Brand new ATE caliper. New pads. New brake pad wear sensors. Uh, new control rod bushing. So the, what we haven't done now is reinstalled our outer tie rod, the uh, center link, and the steering shock that go here. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock all that out because you saw me remove them. We just gotta push them back in there. And then I'm gonna do the other side of the car, which I'm not gonna record because you guys just saw this side of the car. And when I'm done, I'll record the whole thing and show you what we have. All right, guys, it's a few days later and I have finished the passenger side and the, the entire front of the car is done. 
let's go ahead and uh, show you. So you can see the new Bilstein shock over here, and you can see the new lower control arm bushings. And I've refinished in semi-gloss black all the suspension parts. We have a new rotor. Uh, refinished the hub. I've re-greased the bearings and put a new seal in the back. We have brand new ATE calipers and Mercedes pads, new brake pad wear sensors. If we go around here to the back, we have a brand new ball joint, a new control rod bushing. Then we look under here and we have our new uh, right tie rod and our drag link or center link, a uh, new set drag link. We have our new, um, Let's see, stabilis steering shock or steering stabilizer. And we go across here, you see our tie rod and everything new over here. And of course, the upper control arms, those were already replaced by a previous owner. Everything on the front of this vehicle has been rebuilt and it looks absolutely awesome. So that's it for this video, guys. I know it was a long one, and uh, but that's a lot of hard work. And it's finally done. So stay tuned for the next video in this series. Uh, we're going to go ahead and knock out some other items. And this car is going to be done soon. Take care.